Hey guys, Snappy Shipper here, and it's um, been a while since I've uploaded anything to the channel, and I just thought I'd um, uh, tell you why. Uh, so when it comes to like let's playing and stuff like that, I kind of fell out of it, and I didn't really want to do it anymore. I just kind of wanted to play games to play games, and not to play games for on like on camera. Like, my commentary was pretty shitty, and the gameplay was like, meh. So, that's kind of the reason why I stopped. It's been over a year since I've updated the channel. Um, so I thought, like, along with this update, I would do, like, a game pickups type video. Um, I'm not having my face on camera because I look like shit. Um, hopefully the quality's alright. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go through all the games that I've picked up since the beginning of this year. Uh, up until now, and maybe I'll do one of these types of videos, maybe, I don't know, like, once a month, or once every, whenever I feel like it, when I've collected enough games or something to put on screen, I might even do, like, manga pickups and stuff as well that I've done, uh, but yeah, so let's get into it. Start with, uh, first game that I got this year, which was Tales of the Abyss for the 3DS. Um, it's a really, really fucking good game. I think it's probably my favorite Tales game that I've played. Um, it's a really good port from the PS2 version. Uh, fun fact, the PS2 version never came out in Australia or Europe, I believe. It was only in Japan and America. If you have a 3DS, I recommend picking this up. It's a really good game. So yeah, and then I'm just going through in no rent, like a, just a random order, so Picked up uh, Smash Bros. for 3DS, obviously. Uh, if you have a 3DS, you probably have this game. It's, you know, it's Smash Bros. It's good. A lot of people complain about the controls. Uh, I have really no problems with the controls whatsoever. At all. I think it's, I think it's great. And the fact that they managed to get 60 frames per second on a fucking handheld is amazing to me. So, yeah, Super Smash Bros. It's awesome. Next we have Fire Emblem Awakening. Uh, I'm about, I don't know, like 13 hours into the game. It's really, really fucking good. I just, I don't know, I just put off RPGs at the moment. I'm like, I'm huge into JRPGs and stuff like that, and uh, tactics games, and this is probably the best Fire Emblem, uh, Fire Emblem game I've played. Um, I just, I don't know, I just keeps, like, I stop playing games for a bit. Like, once I pick them up, I get really into them, and then I just stop. And then it takes me ages to finish them. Like, going back to, like, Tales of the Abyss before, I bought that in January, and I still haven't beaten it yet, but I do really love the game. So, I don't know how long it's going to take me to beat this, but, um, no, yeah, it's really solid. If you have a 3DS, obviously, pick this up. It's great. Uh, next we have my favorite game for the system, which is Kid Icarus Uprising. <laughs> it was one of those rare cases where I bought the game, and then when I got the game, like, I bought it online, it was shipped to me, uh, and then when I got it, I didn't stop playing it, and I've beaten it so many times now. Uh, <laughs> it's really, really fun, and it's pretty difficult. Um, a lot of people have problems with the controls for the game, and I get why. Like, you use the touch screen to move the camera, L button to shoot, and you use the thumbstick to move around. It's alright during the flying sections, I think it works really well. Uh, but on the ground, it can be a bit... Mm, not good. <laughs> um, I've had... I definitely had problems with it when I first started, but as, you know... you. I kept playing the game, I got more and more used to the controls, and I couldn't imagine actually playing it any other way. Um, but besides that, this game has excellent writing, um, excellent gameplay, it's just really fun, it's just, it's so good. Definitely my favorite on the system. And then up next, the last 3DS game that I've picked up this year was Rhythm Thief. Um, Rhythm Thief for some reason, is discontinued here in Australia. That was also the same with uh, Kid Icarus Uprising. I had to find this online. I got it for like 24 bucks. Um, and, which is good because here they're selling this for 70. Why? God damn it. But yeah, Rhythm Thief, um, 
a really good soundtrack. The rhythm games are pretty interesting. Um, they throw in a lot of different uh, types of mini games. It's not like the same like press the button to the beat over and over and over again. Uh, they there's like um, it's hard to explain. There's, <laughs> the me the different mechanics for each game are really unique. But it's also not just a, a rhythm game. It's also a point-and-click adventure game with, like, puzzle elements to it, too. And it's just, it's really interesting. I didn't actually think it would be like that. I thought it would just be, you know, just a rhythm game. And it also has, like, uh, pretty much just a kid's story. It's nothing too amazing or anything like that, but it it's it gets the job done. It's pretty good. All right. Now, that's all the, th like, handheld games I picked up this year. Um, now on to 360 games. The first being... Uh, I consider to be... I, I, I'm so sad that I bought this. Uh, Final Fantasy XIII Lightning Returns. Uh, so, I was one of the few people that actually liked Final Fantasy XIII. Not because it was a good Final Fantasy game, because it definitely wasn't a good Final Fantasy game. I just... I don't know. I just liked it. I don't know why. And also, same with 13.2. I think um, that 13.2 was an improvement over 13, uh, except that I kind of liked the story more in 13, the, the original 13. And then they released this game, which says, fuck everything, fuck you, I hate you, go die. <sighs> and you know, you could just play as Cloud if you want to, if that ever focuses. It never will focus. You don't need to focus on it. The gameplay, however, was alright. The gameplay was okay. But it was very boring. <laughs> I just didn't like it at all. Uh, this game really... I never finished it either. I got ten hours in and then said, fuck it, I'm looking up the ending because this is really boring. The whole like premise of the game is you're going around saving people's souls or whatever, and the whole game is a timed mission. You have a certain amount of time to do everything, and I, I fucking hate timed missions. Why would they do that to an RPG? God damn it. It's a, like, the whole premise is like you have 13 days to save the world or some shit, and, you know, it starts you off with six, and the more souls you save, the more days you get? And you're only allowed to be out till like 5 a.m. or something like that, and then God calls you, yeah, literally, God calls you back to the hub world and says, Listen, take a break. Also, fuck you. Don't get this game if you like the series, and don't get this game if you don't like the series, you know. F fuck. Great art, though. I like the art on that. It's good. And then the only other 360 game I picked up this year, which was really hard to find, and it's becoming really rare here, is Lost Odyssey. This game is fan-fucking-tastic. Uh, it's, I think it was made by, um, uh, one of the people who worked in, like, the original Final Fantasies on, uh, Super Nintendo and stuff like that. Um, this is a really, really good JRPG. Um, it's, you know, turn-based, like, stick to the roots of JRPG-ness of, you know, turn-based combat. Um, it has its own sort of unique systems within the game, which are pretty interesting, which change up combat a bit. Uh, also haven't finished it yet. Uh, one of those games that just put on hiatus, not because I didn't like the game, it's because I was playing other things as well, and then I just sort of lost track of it. I really need to get back to it. It's a really, really good game. If you have a 360, try and get this game. It's a really good RPG. And, uh, that's it for 360. I only picked up two games for that, because the 360, t like, I started with the... Th the 360 was the first system, like, uh, I guess, before PS4 and Xbox One came out. The next-gen system I owned was uh, the 360 and the Wii. Only I don't pick up Wii games anymore, because they're impossible to find here. Also, they're really expensive. Um, but after that, after about two, three years, I bought a PS3... And this year I've just been pretty much gathering up PS3 games. The first one I got this year was... Nino Kuni. Nino Kuni is a fantastic game. Uh, I was planning on like getting the Platinum Trophy for it, 
but then I looked at the trophies for it and I was like, that's going to take a really, really long time. It's worth it, because it's fun, like, it's not, gonna, it's not boring at all. I just wanted to, you know, spend my time, you know, playing other games and doing other things. This game is really good. If you have a PS3, you should probably get this game. If you like JRPGs, like, it's made by Level 5, and uh, it's written by Studio Ghibli. I think it's Ghibli or Ghibli. I don't know. I, I'm going to call it Ghibli because it sounds funnier. Um, but it's really good. It's a, it, The story isn't uh, amazing or anything like that. It's Think of it like it's a really good kids' movie game. I don't know if you could tell, but I really like kids' stuff. Um, that's just me. But, yeah, this game is a must-buy if you have a PS3, and if you're into JRPGs. If you're not, then, you know, have it for the cool cover art. Like, look at that, that looks fucking great. Anyway, the next game I picked up was Tales of Zillia. Oh, finger on the lens, I'm an idiot. Tales of Zillia. Tales of Zillia is a really good, uh, really good Tales game. Um, I thought it, the story was really, really well done. Uh, the characters were, all the characters were interesting, and they all had their own, like, <clears throat> backstories and stuff like that. Um, it's really solid combat system. Uh, I don't think it's as good as Abyss, mainly because I kind of like the, uh, the combat more in Abyss. Tales of Zillia sort of has a super advanced combo system that I could never get down. It's really fun, but I could just never, never master it or get any good at it. Um, really fun, like with all Tales games, I forgot to mention before, you can play as any of the uh, main party members in your group and they all have different combos, different spells and all that sort of stuff. Really fun game. Um, if you're a Tales fan, you should pick it up. It's really good. Although, I will say that the visuals look really washed out. Um, I'm not really too big a fan of the art style for in-game. Uh, I feel like it's not as colourful as the other games, and I really like bright, colourful things. It's really dark. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's a really good game. And then after that, I picked up... Tales of Grace's F, which fixes the problem that I had with the first game, which was um, the you know the color palette. Color palette in this game is really really good. It was originally released in the Wii in Japan and then ported to the PS3 uh, in the West later. Uh, the combat's really really good. Uh, the characters to me are super bland, and I hated them. I hated the main story for this game, mainly because the whole story for the game is friendship is powerful, and we win because friendship, and friendship, 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 and it, oh, it was really, really cheesy, and just, I didn't like it at all. What they added to the PS3 version, though, was the, uh, the future arc, hence the F. Um, the future arc, feel, I feel like it was written by a completely different team, the future arc is really good, um, and they also added even more combat mechanics to the game. Uh, if you're going to pick this, if you ever pick this game up, um, I don't know, stick through it, I guess, for the lame fucking story, the main story, just to play the future arc, because the future arc is great. It sucks that you can't just play the future arc, but, you know, it's post-game, so it makes sense that you can't. Um, but, give it a shot, the combat's really fun, and you can, you know, you can skip the cutscenes, Fuck the cutscenes, really. Just stick to the combat and the boss battles and stuff like that. Yeah. Really good. If you... Oh, the combat's really good. I can't say the game as a whole is really good, because I'm so mixed on it. But yeah. I would say... I would say pick it up if you're a Tales fan, but definitely don't if you're not. Next we have... Kingdom Hearts 1.5. Uh, the reason why I picked this up is, I never owned Kingdom Hearts on PS2. Um, I always, uh, I think I hired it from, like, Video Easy and Blockbuster and stuff like that. Um, never actually owned the game. Uh, at first, when I first started playing the series, I wasn't too big a fan of Kingdom Hearts. I didn't really like anything about it, because I wasn't, when I was a kid, I wasn't, really wasn't into Disney stuff, and, you know... 
didn't really care for it that much. But um, I now really, really like the series. Um, I know that it's very mixed in the gaming community, whether people like it or not. A lot of people hate it, a lot of people love it. Uh, I love it. I think it's great. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, and I understand. I can completely understand why people don't like this game. It's incredibly cheesy. Um, but, you know, the Kingdom Hearts 1.5 Remix I thought was a good buy, because it came with Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, which was uh, never released outside of Japan. And it also came with... Uh, what was the other game it came with? Uh, Chain of Memories, which was kind of meh. Uh, I didn't really care for the combat system. And then all the cutscenes from the DS game, uh, 352 over two days or something like that. Um, it's a good package, and if you like Kingdom Hearts, I'd say pick it up. But I can I can definitely see why people won't buy this. Um, I personally love it. Again, it's because I love children's shit, you know, all that jazz. Enough about that. Next uh, game, or games, uh, uh, is a series of games that I did own on the PS2, but sold very later on, is the Ratchet & Clank Trilogy. This is fucking awesome. I'm so glad I picked this up, because Ratchet & Clank was the first PS2 game I owned, and it's it's such a fun game. And I never actually got to play uh, Ratchet 2 and 3, so it was really awesome to see that I could get Ratchet 2 and 3 all on one disc, along with uh, uh, Ratchet & Clank 1. Really solid package. If you, if you like uh, 3D platformers with a shit ton of guns, um, definitely pick this up. The, Ratchet, the original Ratchet trilogy is really, really good. Um, the story's a bit, you know, it's cheesy as shit, but I don't care. It's fucking awesome. Really fun. Definitely pick it up if you're on a PS3. It's really good. Next we have Uncharted. Uh, I don't know what to say about Uncharted. Like, the first one's, I feel like it's rough. Um, I didn't really care for uh, the combat. The story was alright. Um, and the, like, the climbing of terrain and the platforming and stuff was really good. I didn't care for the shooting or the amount of enemies you had to fight at all. Um, but, all in all, I think it's a, it's a good game. It's a good, solid, like, adventure game. That's all I can really say about it. I'm not really too keen on this Uncharted game. Speaking of, also got Uncharted 2. Among Thieves, which is considered the best Uncharted game, and I don't know why. A lot of people really love that uh, train segment, like when you're in the uh, the like the snowy mountains or whatever. Um, I hated that segment mainly because there's like a mini boss fight at the end of that, where you're fighting a normal human being and you shoot him 42 times in the head and he doesn't die. Why? He's a human. Like, I, I can understand if he's got, like, maybe, like, a few bulletproof vests on, but he doesn't have anything covering his head, and I'm shooting him in the head, throwing grenades at him, and he doesn't die, and he still manages to kill me. It's really frustrating. The other really frustrating thing is the amount of enemies that they throw at you. I would much rather just be exploring the world, maybe shoot a couple, like, maybe like 10 dudes, maybe, and you just continue on with the story. I think that would have made it much better. Like, it prolongs itself by chucking wave after wave of enemies at you. This goes for all three Uncharted games, too, and Uncharted 3 is next, and I have an even bigger problem with that game. But, um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not really too good at recommending <laughs> this sort of stuff. I get that people really love these games, and I can understand why. The humor's good, the writing's good, the characters are good, but the gameplay is just meh. I just don't care for it at all. Um, besides, like, the climbing elements, the climbing elements are really good. I'll give it that. But the shooting and the ridiculous human enemies that don't die, it gets an air. Eh. And like I said before, Uncharted 3 I picked up as well. Uh, again, set pieces are really good, the story's good, the characters are good, but
but it still falls flat on the gameplay department for me. Like, I just don't care for the shooting at all, whatsoever. Um, the action scenes are great, like, all of the different set pieces, like I said before, are really good, but, and the climbing and all that sort of stuff is good, like, with all the series, but I just don't care for the, sh like, the shooting at all. It's, I just don't like it, I think it's bad. But, um, yeah, it's, I would give all three of these games, if you are going to buy them, I'd give it just a solid meh, because I'm not really too keen on it, I guess. Yeah, that's Uncharted. Don't really want to dwell on that anymore. Next, we have the first in the Ratchet & Clank Future series, which is Ratchet & Clank Tools of Destruction. Uh, Tools of Destruction was uh, a pretty good game. I... I thought it wasn't nearly as good as maybe, like, Ratchet 3, um, but I do appreciate the fact that with the start of this series, they started, uh, making the Ratchet & Clank games in, uh, 60 FPS, and it feels better than the previous Ratchet & Clank games, um, like, control-wise. You know, slippery smooth 60 frames per second always is good, um, this game is really fun. Uh, they added some more, like, in Ratchet 3... You could level up your weapons to, I think, level 5, maybe? And I think they do the same in this, only... Oh, wait, no, that's, um... Oh, that's a future game. Not this one. You still upgrade your guns like normal, like Ratchet & Clank 3. Uh, but, oh, what they added was... Uh, in the previous games, you had this uh, item called the Swing Shot that you always had to go to your gadgets, equip, and then use. Now, and what the Swing Shot does is... Um, you see these little grapple points... And you just, you know, press the trigger button or whatever to shoot at the grapple point and you swing over. Uh, from this series onward, if you just jump towards the um, the grapple points, it automatically equips it for you and then you just press the shoot button. It's a little thing, but it's really good and it, it just makes it easier. To, like, instead of going through your inventory, equipping it... And then, you know, exiting out of the menus and then playing the game again. But, uh, all in all, this is a good game. Um, I'd recommend picking it up if you're a Ratchet fan. Uh, the next game release that I got, um, they're all... I got a bunch of digital releases on the PS3. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them, but I bought a bunch of, like, PS1 classics and, uh, PS2 classics. Including, like, Persona 3 and 4, um, uh, Disgaea, uh, Final Fantasy 9... What else did I get? I got Ratchet & Clank A Quest for Booty, which is the sequel, well, the sort of sequel to Tools of Destruction. It's like an in-between game. And, uh, what else did I get? I got Legend of Dragoon. Uh, man, I'm just picking up random old games that I haven't played before that I've been told are really good. Anyway, on to the next PS3 game that I got, which was Persona 4 Arena. Um, Persona 4 Arena, uh... I think I think it's canon. I think it continues the story from Persona 4. Um, it's a really good fighting game. Um, a lot of people don't really care for it because it's not an RPG in the Persona series. But I didn't mind it at all. Um, they added some new voice actors for two characters in the game, which was uh, Yu, his name is Yu, and uh, Chie. And a lot of people didn't really like the new voice actress for Chie. But I didn't mind um, it's a really solid fighting game. It has some pretty good mechanics in it. Every character is completely different. No one's a clone of one another. It's just a fun game. I like it a lot. Next up, Tales of Zillia 2. Uh, day 1 edition. I did pre-order this game, mainly because I really like... Yeah, get the sleeve off. Stupid fucking... I like Metal Cases a lot. I think Metal Cases look fucking awesome. I'm a big fan of oh, steel books that they call them. Um, I think they're really cool. Um, Tales of Zillia 2. Basically, it's just a continuation of uh, Tales of Zillia. Uh, the only thing... My only real gripe with this game um, was the fact that um, your main protagonist right here for this game is a silent protagonist and it's for me, it was really weird having a silent protagonist in a Tales game. It did work. Um, it worked pretty well, actually. But, um, it was just weird to me. Uh, they imp I think that, for, in my opinion, they improved the leveling up system in this game. 
uh, I think it's much better than uh, Zillia's level up system. You have more customization of your characters, which is always nice. Um, the music is fantastic. I forgot to mention in most of the games, like all the Tales games, besides Graces, I feel like have really good soundtracks, um, which are just really amazing. Um, you know, it's more Tales of Zillia. Uh, that's all I really have to say about it. It's uh, it's really solid. Uh, the story is really good. I feel like it's I th I feel like the story in this. Um, because it's a continuation of Zillia, makes Zillia as a whole really worth getting. Um, just so you c just play both games, and you get it's basically one giant game. Uh, this takes place, uh, I think, a year after Tales of Zillia One. So if you haven't played Tales of Zillia One, you're not gonna understand shit in this game. But uh, definitely pick it up uh, if you've picked up Tales of Zillia. It's really good. Next is, surprise, another Tales game, which is Tales of Symphonia Chronicles. Oh, <coughs> oh God, sneeze. Uh, Tales of Symphonia Chronicles. Um, I've only played about uh, three hours of it, and then I haven't touched it in about a month or two, because I've been busy with stuff and playing other stuff. Um, it's solid. Uh, the... Gameplay is pretty good. It's definitely dated, because um, I believe this was a GameCube game originally, and then they remade it or ported it to the PS3. Uh, both Tales of Symphonia and I think the other one's called Dawn of the New World. So it's two games in one. Um, music is pretty good. Uh, characters are pretty cliche. <laughs> um, combat's pretty good. I actually really like the combat system in this one. Um, you know, it's it's an old tales game and it's good. I like it. It's better it's better than Graces, <laughs> in my opinion. And I've only played three hours of it, so that's saying something. And then finally, last dog barking, last game to pick up. Ratchet and Clank, Crack and Time. Uh fantastic entry to the series, um and great uh ending to, well, in my opinion, great ending to the trilogy of Ratchet & Clank, Tools of Destruction, uh, what's it called? Quest for Booty and A Crack in Time. Yeah. That's about, um, that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, thanks for sticking with it for this long, it's a fucking long ass video. And, um, maybe you'll see more of these in the future. Thanks for watching again, guys. Bye.